Welcome to Tax Law GH and welcome to our video on tax administration in Ghana. In these series of videos, I'll take you through the different principles and concepts that govern um, the framework by which taxes are run in our country. I'll take you through a number of topics ranging from how the Ghana Revenue Authority is structured, how the Ghana Revenue Authority is run, the principles around tax identification numbers, principles around tax clearance certificate. We look at tax dispute resolution mechanism. If you don't agree with the tax authority, what are the avenues the law gives you to get redress? We look at the offenses and penalties when you flout different tax laws. We look at so many um, different concepts. Quickly before I start, it's good to always establish our relevant legislation. What principal laws will we be looking at when it comes to administration of taxes in Ghana? There are two main ones, which would be the Revenue Administration Act of 2016, Act 915 as amended, and the Ghana Revenue Authority Act of 2009, Act 791. That's the law that established the Ghana Revenue Authority as we have it today. Obviously, there are other sources of um, law and guidance, so we have different sources some will mention practice notes, which are not really law, but are documents that give guidance. And we have different um, sources of um, tax guidance, which would be um, notices by the Ghana Revenue Authority and its several divisions. So we'll look at all of these in our subsequent sessions. But for now, let's focus on the GRA. Let's look at its background, its current structure, how it has evolved, and the function of the GRA as prescribed by law. So, first thing we need to know is the GRA, like I said, was established under Act 791 of 2009. So, it was established in 2009. And a little bit of history here GRA, as we have it today, is a merger of three revenue agencies. So, we had a previous um, Customs, Excise, and Preventive Service, which we used to call SEPS back then. Then, we had the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS. And we had the VAT service or the value added tax service. So these three um, agencies or services were brought together, were consolidated, were merged to form the GRA. In addition to these three services, we had a governing board known as the Revenue Agencies Governing Board that was also merged with the three bodies I mentioned to form the Ghana Revenue Authority as we have it today under Act 791. So just know that GRA was formed in 2009 as a merger of a number of old different um, tax bodies. Now these tax entities or these tax divisions or services had different functions and they were so dispersed that they were under their own uh, management and control. So for example, the Customs, Excise and Preventive Service was very distinct from the Internal Revenue Service which was also very distinct from what we used to call the VAT service back then. And that different guidance and a different leadership and a different policies. And it was time to bring all of them together into one unified body that will ensure that Ghana is able to collect the maximum possible tax revenue we can in the most efficient of ways. What are the objectives or the objects of the GRA when it was formed? Um, this can be found in section 2 of Acts 791 for those who are interested in further reading. The objects are very simple. The first is to provide holistic approach to tax and customs administration. So like I said, we are creating one body that can make it easy for us to administer taxes in Ghana. Full stop. End of story. The next is to reduce the administrative and tax compliance costs and to provide better service to taxpayers. As you find out um, in the next few minutes, GRA has come a long way such that the current structure we have now, I'll give you an update of what we have as at the start of 2021. Something really good has happened that has really ensured that GRA has met this object number two, which is to reduce administrative and tax compliance costs and at the same time to provide better services to taxpayers. The third objective was to provide or promote efficient collection of revenue and the equitable distribution of tax burden and to ensure greater transparency uh, or transparency and integrity. The next was to ensure greater accountability to government for the professional management of tax administration. These are all things the GRA um, had as its objective to accomplish when it was formed. 
The next was to improve information linkage and sharing of information among the divisions. So, like I mentioned, in the old organization where we had an internal revenue service, a customs excise and preventive service, and a VAT service, they were very distinct. Uh, information sharing wasn't so smooth, but now it's under one umbrella, Ghana Revenue Authority, so it'll be easy to share information. As I'll show you the structure of the GRA shortly, you realize that now it's one body, so information linkage is really within the same body. Nothing should stop information flow. The next is to provide a one-stop service for taxpayers for the submission of returns and payments of taxes. So in the past, if you wanted to file your VAT return, you had to go to the value added tax service or the VAT service. If you wanted to file your company income tax return, then you had to go to the IRS or the internal revenue service. Now, what we have is you can walk to one Ghana Revenue Authority office and file both your value added tax return and your company income tax return. So you can see clearly the GRI has accomplished this objective of providing a one-stop service for taxpayers when it comes to submission of returns and paying their taxes. The next objective was to provide a common tax procedure that enabled taxpayers to be governed by a single set of rules. So as you realize, I'll mention shortly, or I even did this already, there is a Revenue Administration Act, which was passed in 2016, Act 915. What that act did, or what it did, it does for us now, is to ensure that we have one umbrella act that governs the administration of all taxes in Ghana. The final objective was to provide for other matters related to the improvement of revenue administration in Ghana. We have looked at the objectives of the GRE. Now, what are the functions? What are the things they are set out to do to ensure they meet these objectives? The first function of the GRE is to assess, number one, and number two, to collect taxes, interest, and penalties on taxes due to the Republic with optimum efficiency. So the first thing they do is they assess you for your taxes, and then they ensure they collect these taxes to ensure that we raise the much needed tax revenue for national development. The next function is to pay the amount they collect into something we call the consolidated fund, unless a separate act says that you pay the money elsewhere. So the consolidated fund is, if you don't know what it is, it's kind of like Ghana's mother fund, where we pay um, different sources of monies into for disbursement for um, several national purposes. But just know that the consolidated fund, as the name implies, it's one big fund that takes in all inflows that relates to revenues and different money when it comes to the Republic of Ghana. The next is to promote tax compliance and education in Ghana. So it's one of their functions to ensure that taxpayers are aware of their rights, of their duties and their obligations under different tax laws in Ghana. The next is to combat tax fraud and evasion and to cooperate to the effect or to that effect with other competent law enforcement agencies and other revenue agencies in other countries. So GRA's function also is to ensure that globally we are fighting tax fraud, we are fighting tax evasion. How would they do this? They will collaborate with different revenue authorities in different countries across the world to ensure that this is done. You may be aware, if you're not, um, under the principles of exchange of information, different countries are coming together to sign something we call um, um, exchange of information agreements or tax information exchange agreements or under different things we call common reporting standards to ensure that there is some tax transparency between different territories, between different countries to reduce or to fight tax evasion globally. The next function of GRA is to advise district assemblies on the assessment and collection of their revenue. Also, they are required to prepare and publish reports and statistics that relate to their revenue collection. Then most importantly, actually, they make recommendations to the minister when it comes to revenue collection policy. So there is a tax policy unit at the Ministry of Finance that has a very close working relationship with the Ghana Revenue Authority and they work hand in hand when it comes to developing tax policy for the Republic of Ghana. Then their final function, which is interesting, is they perform any other function in relation to revenue as directed by the minister. Here we mean the Minister of Finance or assigned to it under any other enactment. So we've looked at how the GRI was formed, 
We've looked at the objectives of the GRE. We've seen the functions of the GRE. Now let's look at the governing body of the GRE. As seen here, in simple terms, the governing body of the GRE is a board. And that board consists of a number of persons. The first is a chairperson. Then the Commissioner General of the GRE also sits on the board. Then there will be a rep from the Ministry of Finance, not below the rank of a director. Then we have a rep of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, also not below the rank of a director. Then either the Governor of the Bank of Ghana or a rep of the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, not below the rank of a Deputy Governor. Then finally, we have four other persons from the private sector, two of whom must be women. And these will be the persons who constitute the governing board of the Ghana Revenue Authority. And just as a side note, remember that the President of Ghana will appoint the chairperson and members of the board of the GRA in accordance with Article 70 of our 1992 Constitution, which deals with an appointments by the President. Now let's look at the structure of the GRI proper, like what or how is the Ghana Revenue Authority structured. This is very important to know and for those who are watching this for exam, very key examinable area, finds its way in an exam in one way or the other. We are saying the authority is headed by a Commissioner General with support from three Commissioners who will be in charge of three divisions. So remember, there's one Commissioner General who will be supported by three commissioners from three divisions. What are the three divisions? We have the DTRD or the Domestic Tax Revenue Division. We have the Customs Division and we have the Support Services Division. So DTRD, CD and SSD, right? For those who are interested in technology, um, you know in tech, CD is a compact disk, right? And SSD is a solid state drive. So just remember that when you take DTRD out, CD and SSD have something to do with tech, storage devices, if that will help you remember. So DTRD, CD, and SSD. For DTRD, or the Domestic Tax Revenue Division, as the name implies, they are responsible for the collection of domestic taxes. Just like here, remember I said GRA is an integration of what? The old IRS or Internal Revenue Service, the old VAT service, the old Customs Excise and Preventive Service, right? So the DTRD is responsible for collection of every domestic tax, either direct or indirect. So as long as it's a domestic tax, the DTRD is in charge. So now, whether it's a direct tax leading them, um, having to do with employment taxes, having to do with company taxes, having to do with VAT, having to do with communication service tax, having to do with um, local excise, anything that is domestic, either direct or indirect, will be collected by the domestic tax revenue division. So whether it's petroleum, um, royal, petroleum um, royalties, mineral royalties, anything that has to do with domestic taxes will be collected by the DTRD. Their core function really is to identify all taxpayers, assess the taxpayers, and then collect the taxes and pay the amount into the consolidated fund. We've spoken about a DTRD. Let's look at the CD or the Customs Division. So in the Customs Division is responsible for the collection of taxes at the ports, at the borders of Ghana, and at the entry point into the country. They also perform a preventive function by patrolling the country's borders and other strategic locations. So they also ensure that we, people do not smuggle in goods into Ghana. So apart from helping to collect revenue, you remember the old name was Customs, Excise and Preventive Service. So they still excise a preventive service by preventing, as the name implies, um, certain things from happening. So they help the GRA to, um, the, to enforce collection of taxes. So when you hear um, that a certain business has been closed or their business has been locked because they've not paid taxes, that some goods have been seized because they contain and they, the goods contained hard drugs or illegal drugs, remember that some in some way or in some shape or form, the customs division might be involved in those um, actions. The next is, they also perform agency duties on behalf of ministries, departments, and agencies. So these also relate to enforcing laws on prohibitions and restrictions on imports and exports. So if something has been banned from being imported into Ghana or being exported from Ghana by any other law, the customs division will help whichever ministry, department, or agency to carry out um, this 
restriction or restrictive function. They also facilitate international trade, foreign exchange control, public health, security and safety, among several others. Then finally, last but not least, the Support Services Division. They provide administrative and managerial support to the DTRD and the Customs Division to enable them to perform their operational functions effectively. So you find departments such as finance, administration, human resource, training, IT, all of these will sit within the Support Services Division. Now that we've looked at how the GRA is structured at a high level, let's come to how the DTRD is structured. Now this is where you have to pay very close attention because something really tremendous, something really big has changed um, just over the past few months. In the last half of 2020, the DTRD has changed the structure. So this is the whole structure. This is what you probably know, this is what you probably have seen around. But take note, if you are studying for an exam especially, this has changed. The examiner would like to pick on this to see if you are following current development. So, under the old DTRD structure, taxpayers were categorized into three main segments. Large taxpayers, medium taxpayers, and small taxpayers. For large taxpayers, any business organization whose annual turnover was over 5 million Ghana cities the whole year, they were a large taxpayer and they were managed by the large taxpayer office or an LTO of the GRA. Apart from this turnover threshold, there were specialized industries that were automatically LTO. So like those in the upstream oil and gas mining companies, the big telcos, were technically LTOs um, in addition to other um, industries. Then we had the medium taxpayers. These were businesses that annual turnover between 5 million CDs and 200,000 Ghana CDs for the whole year. Then they were managed by medium taxpayer offices or so MTOs spread across the country. Then we had small taxpayers. These were really small and micro businesses with an annual turnover below 200,000 Ghana CDs. They were run by something called offices called STOs or small taxpayer offices spread across the country. I'm not spending too much time here because effective the second half of 2020, this no longer exists. So what is the new structure? Please pay close attention. Under the new structure, the DTRD has three sub divisions, if I may call them that, but it's no longer LTO, MTO, STO. It's now LTO, Area Offices and Taxpayer Service Centers or TSCs. So remember, LTO still remains, but we've replaced the MTOs and the STOs with Area Offices and Taxpayer Service Centers. What is the function of the LTO as we have it now, um, effective right now, is to focus on large corporate businesses, public institutions, and high net worth individuals. The LTO is located in Accra, really, and will serve all large taxpayers across Ghana. However, there will be an LTO desk, which will be located in selected taxpayer service centers outside the greater Accra region, where there is a concentration of large taxpayers. So the intention is really to have the LTO in Accra and have an LTO desk in different taxpayer service centers where we have a lot of large taxpayers so that they are able to file their returns and um, do anything or deal with anything they have to do with their large taxpayer office in Accra. Let's look at the area offices. The area offices, as of the time of recording, um, the plan is to have 10 area offices which will provide technical and administrative support in the management of the taxpayer service centers, including centralized audits and enforcement functions. So you can see GRA is trying to um, have a very efficient system of running tax administration in Ghana. What are they trying to do here? When it comes to audit, when it comes to tax enforcement, when it comes to collection, the area offices will coordinate all of these functions so that we can leave the taxpayer service centers to do what the name implies, to provide services to taxpayers. Services like, let's look at that now. They're saying the TSCs or the taxpayer service centers will serve taxpayers within their area of operation. So wherever you have a small taxpayer office or a medium taxpayer office, if you've observed, you would have changed the, the board or the sign post to read taxpayer service center. So if you have, let's say, Legon Medium Taxpayer Office, it will be rebranded to Legon Area Office Stroke 
Legon Taxpayer Service Center. They will carry out registration, receiving returns, complaints, inquiries, and payments, compliance, debt management, and tax education. So remember, quick recap, what we have under the new structure is a large taxpayer office, we have area offices, we have taxpayer service centers. The old system of LTOs, MTOs, and STOs is gone. RIP to that. For those interested, um, this is the list as of the time Jerry published, um, made a publication of, of this. This is a list of um, new area offices and taxpayer service centers. You can take, you can hit the pause button and look at them. You can see they are spread across the country evenly. Obviously, going ahead, they will introduce more based on need and requirements in the different areas to serve taxpayers and provide a lot better service. So take away from here is that as you can even see ongoing Ghana's tax administration system is undergoing a lot of reform. As we'll see in subsequent sessions, we will see things along the lines of even the dispute resolution mechanism has changed. We have something called the independent tax appeals board that has come into place. Jerry also introduced in 2020 something called the Tax Audit and Quality Assurance Unit. So they are doing a lot of things to ensure that taxpayers are being provided the best of service. And I think they deserve a lot of um, credit. They are ensuring that we can pay our taxes electronically and all of that. So Jerry is doing a great job. Tax is going to be great in the next few years. And I look forward to that. Let's look quickly at some core tax administration provisions in the law and what you need to know about this. First thing we need to know is how are tax laws administered in Ghana? Section 1 of Act 915, which is our Revenue Administration Act of 2016, says the GRA is responsible through the Commissioner General for administering and giving effect to tax laws in Ghana. So the Commissioner General has the power to administer laws. So remember, the laws, the acts, the legislative instruments are passed by parliament, but the Commissioner General has the power to administer the laws to ensure that the purpose for which the laws were passed will be realized. And I think without limiting the powers and responsibilities of the Commissioner General under the GRA Act, the Commissioner General may give written directives that are necessary for the administration and implementation of tax laws. So we've seen several directives, we've seen several documents that have come out. In fact, what I showed you that had a list, the table that had a different area offices was something from the Commissioner General to everybody else. So he has been given the power to, apart from administering by way of what the law says, he has the power to give directives to, you see that several notices in a daily graphic, in a different newspapers, on social media these days, saying something has changed and the Commissioner General is saying we should do it this way or that way. So remember, the Commissioner General of the GRA has the power to administer taxes in Ghana. Let's look at authorization and protection of tax officers. Another very, very crucial um, thing to learn. They are saying that the Commissioner General may delegate functions. So remember, He's one person. He cannot do everything. He cannot. It's not possible. It's it's a huge um, country to manage when it comes to taxes. Remember, we've merged three different divisions under one. So if one person is supposed to run everything, he literally cannot do everything. He has to depend on people. So we are saying he may delegate functions specified under Section 14 of the GRA Act to a tax officer, but shall not delegate functions to any other person even if the person is an expert or public officer assisting in performing a function. So we'll look at um, the functions he can delegate and the ones he cannot. So for the purpose of the above, only a tax officer of the rank of senior revenue officer or above or specifically authorized by the Commissioner General may perform a function delegated under a tax law. Let's look at the powers the Commissioner General um, can exercise right so i say in fairness of the above only a commissioner may exercise the following remember i said there is a commissioner general and under the three different divisions which is if you remember we had dtrd we had cd and we had ssd right we are saying that each of these three is headed by a commissioner so and those commissioners also have deputy or assistant commissioners and all of that so just know that we are saying in fairness of this only a commissioner 
may exercise the following functions on behalf of the Commissioner General. So he can delegate these things I'm going to mention to a person of the rank of Commissioner, but not below. Just remember. So the power to grant an extension of time for holding documents or assets seized, only a Commissioner can exercise this. The power to remit a penalty or refund the tax, remit simply means to forgive in simple terms. The power to compound offenses, the power to issue practice notes, all of these are things that only a commissioner can do. Also, the power to exempt a person from the provisions of um, the act. We'll look at this when we get into the details subsequently. Then the power to abate a duty, also under the Customs Act. Only a commissioner can do any of these things. As in the commissioners may act jointly in exercising powers referred to above, including where the exercise relates to more than one law. So remember, it's one authority but there may be areas where there are overlaps, so they are allowed to come together to exercise the functions. We are saying here, note, commissioner here means a commissioner appointed under section 16 of the GRA Act. So let's pause here. Um, in our subsequent session, we will look at how tax is defined. We'll begin to look at tax identification numbers, we'll look at tax credit certificates, we'll look at the interesting areas. For now, let's pause here. Um, if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments box below and if you love this don't forget to smash the like button and to share this video within your entire network i'll catch you in the next video